channel. If you think it's easy to hold five Spyderco knives in two hands, I have news for you. I'm not pretending to be scissor hands. I'm gonna put them down before I cut something off that I want to. This would have been a perfect opening for my uh, new series that I call Five Knives in 15 Minutes, because these are five knives in 15 V. All of these knives are sprint runs. In case you don't know, there's this big, big triple B logo on each of these blades. That stands for Big Brown Bear. What I wanted to do today is a little different from what I normally do, because instead of like giving you secondhand information, you will get the firsthand information from the Big Brown Bear himself. And I will link the videos that I'm using so that you can go and check out and thank the video creators who put them up there. So let's start with calibrating my Rockwell tester. As my frequent viewers already know, I start all my Rockwell tests with a verifying calibration of my tester. I use this serialized, independently certified to the NIST standards block. This block is manufactured for and distributed by a company called Phase 2, which is based in the US. It's sourced in China and then certified independently to NIST standards in the United States. It is also certified in China, but to their local standard. This block costs about 150 bucks, so I'm trying to maximize the use of it. But every time I use it, I still have to space my pokes about three millimeters or one eighth of an inch apart. I am doing the second calibration just because Sean Houston or Big Brown Bear has a stellar reputation within the knife community and therefore for this test I have to hold myself to the higher standards. In a second you will see Sean on the left being interviewed and on the right you will continue watching the test of the blade. 62.2 I'm well within the calibration Still let's go. Here at uh, SHOT Show 2023 with Sean Houston, Big Brown Bear <laughs> and yeah well we were just looking at those um, sprint runs those 15v sprint runs yes sir and well why 15v anyway well given the popularity of k390 over the past several years and my love for things like maximet and also cpm 10v it, i think it would make sense that we're looking for another flavor of that something that give us more of the properties we like from k390 and maybe balance those out a bit more than from the maximet so to me in my mind when i was looking at things i thought it made perfect sense kind of we have k390 here we have maximet here and CPM 15V right there in the middle. Now, one of the big problems with CPM 15V is, as it came, the heat treatment they had sent it with, uh, with the protocol, maybe it doesn't work the best for a knife edge. So where I kind of come into play is, I basically had gone in and made it so the heat treatment would work better when it comes to sharpenability, the edge stability, and make it translate better into a knife. So you helped develop the steel or? No, not the steel. The CPM 15B has been out for a while. It's actually been out since at least 1994. So it's an older steel and it's for an industry where you're looking for stuff where you would use carbide, but maybe you would want more toughness in carbide. So you change the heat treat. You do your own heat treat. I do my own heat treatment. I'm a custom knife maker. I've been doing my own custom knives and I had a collaboration project with Spider Crew over here and uh, Sal had asked me to do a collaboration with them and he offered it and I said, yes, of course, I'd love to do that. But while that was waiting, uh, Eric had approached me and said, hey, would you like to um, get the CPM 15V and that heat treatment into a sprint run while you're waiting. So they're doing your heat treat? Yeah. They're doing my heat treatment on the CPM 15V, which was excellent. And uh, from the start, they gave me the complete autonomy and authority to translate that CPM 15V directly into that knife. I was basically making the decisions in the heat treatment department there at Spyderco. So it was very exciting. There was a lot of shipping things back and forth. It wasn't quite as simple as maybe just sending a recipe over and then they just copy that. I think a lot of people, that's what they think about with heat treatment, that it's, oh, it's so simple. So you're personally involved. You didn't just mail them a letter. No, no, no. Or a phone call. Yeah, you know, there were samples being shipped back and forth and there was testing being done on both sides. So yeah. It's very exciting. And well, it doesn't say right there, says Sean Houston. Yeah, but Big Brown Berry, we all know he has his own channel. And if you want to see more of the 15V and the testing and the heat treating, I know he features it all on that channel. Isn't Thank that you. true? Yeah, yeah, that's my YouTube channel or whatnot. And uh, yeah, I'd appreciate you guys come on over and check it out. And also, the Knife Joker is a great place to go and buy knives. I've met Travis, Travis at several shows and he's always he's wonderful to talk to. And that's a great place I would bring my business there. To and of course, if you want to get a big brown bear knife, now we all can. We Us normal people, we can, yeah. well, try to shoot for that sprint run. Good luck getting it, I'm just saying. You but, know, as a custom maker, it was always, 
difficult. I'm making them by hand. It's difficult to get the volumes uh, out to people. They have to be expensive because they take me so much time and the abrasives needed to grind those things. So when Spider is able to mass produce something like this, we all win. We all get a chance to get our hands on stuff and try stuff. And really, that's what it comes. That's what it's about. I think some people maybe they look at the stuff the wrong way. They think, okay, Sean's coming out here. He's trying to tell the world that 15D is the only steel we need. Blah blah blah. It's the best ever. I've never said that. I think the point we're trying to make here at Spydeco and myself is that we think people should have different options to try different things. And that's what makes it so exciting and refreshing. You know, variety, the spice of life, variety. Well, I think Spyderco's working with 30 over 30 different steels now. So they're not going to go with one steel. There's still going to be VG10. There's still going to be H2. And there's going to be a spot for all these steels. Exactly, so. exactly. I think some people were thinking about this being some sort of replacement for some things. And I'm, I'm not sure if that's the intent. I think the intent was just to give you guys another thing to try and see what you think. And so far, the reception's been amazing. Thank well, you. Well, so far, support. the Manics came out, and those are gone. So I'm going to say, yeah, once again, good luck getting that Sprint one if you're trying to get one. And thanks, Sean. Thanks for sharing more about 15B and about you personally Thank and you. about the heat treat. Thanks, Travis. Thanks once again. It. Excellent. And that was just something that you had done, just looking at data sheets, you were uh, about 15B, or did you already have samples at this time uh, testing 15B? So I've been a custom knife maker, so I, I get kind of a, an excellent opportunity to try out different steels. I would like to see how do these things work inside of a knife. Yeah. I've been a big Spydeco fan. I've been a professional knife sharpener for 10 years. So I have had experience with these things. and. I was curious, why don't we give this a try? And I got on the Spatico forum and I was like, hey Sal, why don't we get CPM 15V? And you know, Sal didn't really have an answer. And I got a piece of it, I ground it into something, I sharpened it, I tried the standard protocol and it just, I saw why there wasn't any CPM 15V. The mm -hmm. edge didn't seem like it was holding up very well. And then I got curious and I thought to myself, maybe there's a way we could work with the heat treatment yeah. and kind of tailor that into something that makes it so that the edge will actually have more stability. Okay. That it's not prone to rolling and chipping and also takes an excellent edge mm. that deburrs really well. And so it took you know several iterations and years to work on that and I found something that I thought was really exciting. Okay. okay. And then Sal had offered, hey, we would like to do a collaboration folder with you. And I was like, oh my God, that'd be amazing. Sal, can I select the steel and heat treatment for that? Yeah. And he said, of course. Wow. And they don't usually do that. So that was really exciting that they, uh, that they did that with me. That's what I was wondering because generally when you hear about exclusives or sprint runs, that are inspired by an individual or an organization. It's simply the color of the G10 or the color of the FRCP or FRN and then the steel. And then Spyderco would, would obviously develop its own heat treat for that steel yeah. or you know whatever the case may be. So it's cool to see someone with expertise like you, Thank you. you know, having it be respected by a manufacturer and say, hey, you might actually know something more about this specific item, you know, the specific, you know, factor, the, the CPA yeah. 15 b so they actually rolled you into that. And I really appreciated the respect they had for my work to, to actually do that. That's, that's really kind cool. of like a really, really, you know, off the wall thing to do. Sure. Yeah. So from there, the collaboration knife is going to be put on hold because I wanted it made in golden, which is my favorite, <laughs> yes, you know, yes. and uh, they t Eric approached me and said, hey, while we're waiting for that, why don't we get this into some sprint rounds? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And I was like, that's a fantastic idea. That's really cool. Yeah. And so he bought just the whole melt of that steel. They come in these billets and we got that whole thing enough to make, you know, several sprint runs yeah. with the Manix 2, as yes. we remember, the Shaman, the PM2, and the Mule that used up all that steel we had. And I was actually given the autonomy and authority to translate that heat treatment. Wow. You know, Eric was essentially like, okay, well, you're in charge. Wow. And you tell these guys what to do for getting this heat treatment translated like what you have from your shop. Sure. So that was incredible. That's and that's really cool. basically how it needed to happen to fully translate this into something that, you know, I could proudly stand behind. And so it has my logo on the yes. side. So a lot of people are curious, like, why would you put your logo on the side of something? It's not your knife design. And what did you do? You just sent them a, a, a cook sheet or whatnot. <laughs> yeah. No. Like, is that simple? Yeah, no, yeah. it wasn't that simple. If it was that simple, everybody would be doing all kinds of like yeah, wacky stuff. Yeah, there'd be an Evan Rogers. Yeah, yeah, yeah it'd be all kinds of wacky. <laughs> and the problem is, like, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. If it did, we would be doing it. I'm not saying that, like, oh, there's a hold up. Or, we sure. would be doing that if that worked. It doesn't quite work like that. There's yeah. some details that do need to be worked out when you're translating anything. I don't care what it is. So it was shocking. really cool. <laughs> yeah, shocking, right? <laughs> Were you uh, surprised by just how well the, the sprints have done? Or the sprint, I should say. We've, I uh, honestly, the... uh, you have no idea how a sprint's going to do until it's done. Yeah. So I just, I'm about to get on my hands and knees and be like, thank you so much for helping me. You know, yeah. like everybody, the support has been extraordinary. And uh, all I had to focus on was just doing my part of the job, which was making sure that the heat treatment was where it had to be. Yeah. 
doing extensive testing with how it was sharpening, going back sometimes if things were being done not to where it needed to be, like, no, we need to go back and do it like this, yeah. things like that, and then confirming the hardness would be where we wanted it to be. And there was a line of people waiting to hardness test it also at the end there. We had, you know, a uh, gentleman, he tested 64.9. Wow. Uh, Brian Kim, he got 64.8. Okay. Uh, we had Phil Wilson got 65. Uh, D Cuts nice. Cutlery, he got 65. Okay. So. I'm trying to keep it under 15 minutes, and there are a couple interesting findings that I'd like to share in the end about the knife, so I'll be very quick. I used two blocks because I got nervous about uh, some of these blades being above 66, and uh, based on what the interview you just saw, uh, what they were saying. So here's the two blocks. This one is uh, NIST certified. This is my backup block. It is certified by phase two to be at 62 point nine hrc hope you can see it right there and um, i use it sometimes to double check myself because i don't want to give you wrong information been there and i'm will never stop apologizing for that so now i am going to show you this is what the knives gave me for the time's sake pause the video and uh, look at the results and down on the bottom uh, is what the blocks were reading you can draw your own conclusions. My conclusion is, hey, this is 65 and a half to 67 HRC, a 1.5 HRC spread. I think this is legit. Now, uh, I have a request for you guys. Uh, if you wish to help my channel, because these are at the end of their useful life, I, in a couple of months, I have to reorder them. Also, I'm going to get both of them uh, NIST certified just for these occasions. Uh, so if you can, uh, you know, hit the like, share the link to my video, even copying the link by hitting share and copy helps algorithm decide to show it to more people just like yourselves. And then uh, those of you who are joining my channel as members, the link is in the description to join my channel. Thank you so much. You are my inspiration and my strongest supporters. And also same goes for the folks that buy super thing. A couple bucks here and there, you wouldn't believe how much it helps. So thank you for that, and let's get back to the video. Every time I shoot a video about iconic knives like these, I always uh, worry about, am I going to have something new to say about them? So every time I find something new or interesting about the knives I'm reviewing, I'm super eager to share with you. So I found two things about the knives. So this is the Manix 2 Lightweight, and as you know, it has a bearing ball locking system. Now, what I discovered when I took the blade out for the test is that in this knife, just as in the salt series, the bearing ball that holds everything together is ceramic, not steel, which is great because this steel is somewhat corrosive and putting a steel ball of different metal composition next to the another steel would, and you know, then putting a knife in a sweaty environment uh, such as uh, shorts pocket in the summertime or anywhere near water would just in itself and any humidity cause galvanic corrosion between the bowl and the blade so instead of uh cheaping us out and the knife was super inexpensive i mean i paid 156 bucks for it i think it was 25 percent off but anyway i bought it during spider core wide brand wide sale sale and i thought it was a steel it's an absolute steel you know and has a ceramic bowl. I was very excited about that. Uh, I don't know, I'm a nerd like that. And then another feature I discovered on the Shaman, I noticed that, so all of them but the Manix are compression locks, which I also growing to like. I didn't really like them in the beginning um, of collecting Spydercos, but they grew on me. Well, I noticed on the Shaman, which surprised me, when I, uh, when I draw the blade shot like this, it, there's, uh, there's like this little tab here that always hits me on the on the index finger and prevents the blade from fully closing. So I have to either remember and get my finger out of the way and or I get tapped and then I still have to push the blade close. So I was wondering why they did it. And somebody maybe already published something about that. I haven't seen it. Like it has uh, obviously some tactical flavor to it because uh, four position clip tells screams tactical into me because people that carry uh, tactical knives on the molly gear prefer a tip down configuration it's it's a little quicker to access that way anyway so i digress as always it's a little bit on the tactical side so when you extract it from wherever you carry it you place your 
uh, index finger, it'll pop the blade out of detent. So what it does, it uh, facilitates this quick motion. So it's very secure and I couldn't, maybe it's because it's brand new, but I can't shake it out. But if I just barely touch it like this, see, just barely move it, it just swings open. And maybe that was a feature that everybody knows about, but I am a recovering Benchmade collector, I should say. Um, and that's why uh, I'm excited about this feature.